good afternoon to everybody. And uh, thank you very much to the organizers of this cycle of uh, seminars for inviting me to present uh, our results, also the most recent ones about quantum transport through germanium vacancy defects in silicon for application in quantum technologies. This work is being performed in the, in the framework of an NFFA project involving the University of Milan, the CNR IFN, and the Waseda University in Japan. The purpose of nanoscale foundries and fine analysis infrastructure is very similar to the purpose of ATSF. Indeed, NFFA allows the users to have access to theoretical and experimental facilities of a, a consortium of more than 20 partners in, uh, in Europe. And uh, in this particular case, uh, the solid state theory group of the University of Milan was uh, asked to support the characterization and experimental results obtained by Enrico Prati of CNR relative to quantum transport in a silicon-based transistor doped with germanium ions that was realized thanks to single ion implantation technique by our uh, Japanese collaborators, Professor Tani and uh, Shinada. So we start uh, this work and uh, the characterization of, uh, sorry, I cannot go on. Okay, the characterization of uh, the quantum transport through such kind of defects was indeed a preliminary achievement uh, of our research in view of uh, a more ambitious uh, final purpose uh, that was uh, the discovery and characterization of uh, new points in, in silicon that could be exploited uh, also to uh, have uh, quantum technologies devices that can operate uh, at high temperature, in particular at ambient conditions. So it can, they could be used at room temperature. The development of uh, quantum technologies has known an incredible boost in last years, as witnessed also by the European Quantum Technology Flagship. One of the four domains of the roadmap for quantum technologies is uh, actually the quantum computing that uh, exploits the quantum entanglement and quantum superposition for logical operations. The logic units that can be used in quantum computers that are called qubits have to fulfill a series of requirements for their application. In particular, they should be easily initialized and they should allow an easy readout they should have a long quantum coherence to allow uh, coherent operation. And uh, also it will be important to have devices that are integrable in, uh, in the industrial production and uh, that are also able to operate uh, at room temperature. Some uh, systems have been already proposed as qubits and uh, some of them have been already integrated in the market as demonstrated by the physical roadmap for a physical qubit quantum computer that uh, involves uh, the leaders uh, industries in the field. Among the suitable candidates to be used as qubit, uh, the point defects in semiconductors have been uh, envisioned as uh, promising ones because they allow to encode the quantum information in the electron or nuclear spin that can be manipulated by means of an external electric or magnetic field or by using microwave radiation or also optical uh, means. Apart from the prototype uh, system, which is represented by the NV center in Diamond, also, single qubits uh, uh, obtained in planting phosphorus atoms in silicon have been recently obtained uh, with the advantage to allow a feasible integration of this procedure in the semiconductor industry. Recently, 
Also, an infidelity to Kubiet logic gate has been realized by a couple of group. Moreover, the implantation of conventional dopants in silicon give rise to interesting quantum transport properties that range from Coulomb blockade effects showing uh, the appearance of such a Coulomb peak just below the conduction band to the quantum transport through uh, upper bands. And uh, the installation of the two regimes depend on the density of uh, the uh, dopant implanted in the sample. So uh, the use of uh, implantation uh, techniques of uh, phosphorus and arsenic atom in silicon have uh, such uh, advantages, but the major drawback in dealing with the, such kind of systems is related to the very shallow levels of uh, phosphorus atoms that make them completely ionized at room temperature. So in order to exploit point different in silicon for room temperature operations, it will be important to have uh, defects that are characterized by very deep levels in the energy gap in order to prevent their thermal ionization at high temperature. For example, the silicon vacancy has this property because uh, it is characterized by uh, an electronic levels at about uh, minus 0.6 electron volt from the conduction band. But on the other hand, the silicon vacancies that are naturally present uh, in uh, silicon samples uh, are difficult to be localized and uh, are uh, difficult to be handled by an experimental point of view. So our uh, idea was uh, to exploit the implantation of uh, single ions in silicon to achieve a position controlled functionalization of the vacancies. In particular, by implanting a very large atoms as a germanium, they will naturally tend to aggregate to the vacancy, forming a stable germanium vacancy complexes in order to relax the strain in the system. Moreover, germanium is uh, isoelectronic to silicon, so it is expected to preserve the electronic properties of uh, the vacancy. On this basis, the experiment, our experimental partners have uh, realized a silicon-based transistor with uh, 10 to 100 implanted germanium ions in the channel. In particular, they have realized two kinds of uh, samples, one with a long channel and another one with a, a shorter channel. And uh, the distance between uh, the defect if, uh, is of the the order of uh, 10 nanometers, more or less. They demonstrated that um, in uh, such kind of uh, silicon-based transistor doped with germanium, it is possible to see uh, the defect activation for temperature of annealing above 500 uh, degrees Celsius. And this is visible in the increase of the conductance just below the silicon conduction band. In order to characterize better this uh, kind of defects created by the implantation of germanium ions, they then asked us to support the experiments by a theoretical characterization of the defects. And uh, in particular, we have characterized the possible defects in terms of uh, idea uh, perfect stoichiometry and energy stability. We have calculated the charge transition level to evaluate the energy required to add electron to the system. And we have performed simulation of quantum transport in order to explain the properties observed in the trans characteristics measure, measured by our experimental partners. To do this, we have exploited a multi-scale approach, in particular to study the properties of a single defect we use the periodic Cabinetio density functional theory uh, approach with the screen exchange uh, hybrid functionals in which the amount of exact exchange is given by the inverse of the dielectric function of uh, silicon. 
While uh, in order to study very large systems uh, and in particular transport through an array of such defects, we have uh, set up an Hubbard model Hamiltonian. But the important point here is that uh, all the parameters that uh, are inside this Hamiltonian are derived from uh, our previous ab initio calculation, as uh, I will show you in, uh, in a moment. Okay, so starting from the stoichiometry of the defects, we have cons considered different kind of, uh, of defects, including uh, a different number of vacancies uh, aggregated with uh, germanium. All these uh, three defects uh, are stable in energy and they are characterized by increasing uh, formation energy depending on the number of vacancies. Moreover, they display deep energy levels in the gap. Some of them are occupied by the unpaired electrons that are left by the vacancy, while the empty states approach to the bottom of the conduction band, depending on the number of vacancies inside the, the defect. Apart for this characterization at the DFT level, we have also tried to give a description of the charge excitation corresponding to the addition of one electron to the system. So we have calculated the charge transition level exploiting the Yannack theorem that allow us to express this energy difference, uh, this difference between the Fermi level of the defect in the charge state Q and Q prime as uh, the average between the homolumo levels of uh, the defect for two different fillings that differ for uh, one electron. We uh, calculate the charge transition levels for in both the adiabatic and the thermodynamic conditions. That means that in the former case, we keep the atomic position fixed to the equilibrium position that the defect display in the ground state in the neutral case. While in the second case, the thermodynamic condition, the ions are free to relax when additional charge is added to the system. And we obviously found that uh, the germanium ions tend to relax, to shift toward the vacancy in order to reduce the electronic repulsion uh, due to the added electrons. Okay, I've reported here a, a summary of uh, our results concerning the calculated charge transition levels for the addition of uh, one and two electrons to the system in comparison uh, with uh, the available ones from uh, the literature for conventional dopants and also for the single vacancy. As you can see, all the defects considered have uh, deep levels in the gap and in particular, the germanium vacancy complex is characterized by energy states that are quite similar to the uh, vacancy ones as desired, in particular for the thermodynamic case. And the most amazing result is that uh, this uh, theoretical estimate of the charge transition level is also in very good agreement with the available deep level transit spectroscopy experiments that identify two levels at about 0.3 electron volt and 0.5 electron volt from the conduction band as due to the implantation of germanium in silicon sample. So on the basis of uh, such a result, we can conclude that the germanium vacancy complex is uh, probably the most likely present in our system. Another interesting point is that uh, the energy difference between uh, the two levels corresponding to the addition of one or two electrons is quite large. It, and uh, this means that uh, when the defect is already occupied by one electron, the energy required to add a second electron is uh, considerably large. And uh, so the defect is characterized by a large electronic correlation. Moreover, giving a look at uh, the wave function of the charge defect, we see that it is uh, very localized around the defect itself. 
And uh, also the decay length of such wave function is uh, one third of uh, the decay length of conventional uh, dopant atoms, in particular of uh, phosphorus. So we, are, we can conclude that we are dealing with a defect which is characterized by tightly bound states and large electronic correlation. And so it could be uh, really well described by a tie banding a barred approach. The possibility to use a model tie banding a barred Hamiltonian is very useful when we have to deal with very long systems and array of defects as the situation that we have in the experiments, because in the experimental condition, the distance between defects is of the order of some nanometers, and also we have many defects inside the, the channel. So it, this system will not be um, treated simply with the ab initio approach, but uh, the uh, tight binding Hubbard uh, model could be useful to, to deal with uh, such kind of, uh, of uh, system size. So we set up a standard Hubbard uh, Hamiltonian in which we have different contribution, the hopping between the sites, the Hubbard uh, term, and also the Coulomb, uh, the long range Coulomb interaction between the defects. As I said before, all the parameters inside this Hamiltonian are derived by our previous ab initio calculation. In particular, the Hubbard parameter is given by the energy difference between the charge transition levels. The on-site energy is uh, the equal to the deeper state in the gap, and the hopping and Coulomb uh, interaction are derived from uh, two centers integrals that are calculated exploiting the ab initio wave function. Indeed, uh, this procedure to get the hopping and the W is uh, quite common for uh, conventional dopants. And in particular, these two centers integrals are obtained by exploiting a model wave function, which is reported here. And that uh, looks uh, very delocalized around the defect and also very symmetric. But uh, this is not the case in our system because uh, as I said before, the wave function is localized and it is also asymmetric. So we think that uh, a better description of the system could be obtained if uh, we use this ab initio calculated wave function to obtain uh, our parameters. In particular, the calculated hopping term is quite small if compared with the, the hopping obtained for phosphorus atoms. And uh, for this reason, we can conclude that the germanium vacancy complexes are characterized by a very large U over T ratio compared to phosphorus atoms in silicon. In order to treat the quantum transport through a one-dimensional array of uh, such defects, we have included uh, also the contribution of the leads and the coupling between the array and the electrodes. The conductance is obtained via a transition rate equation in which uh, the tunneling rate from left to right express the overlap between uh, an electron state, which is prepared on one side of the array on top of an n minus one electron state, and the other n electron state within the array. So if there is a, a good overlap with, between the left and right side of the array, the resonant transport can uh, occur. On the other hand, the grand canonical probability give us the probability to have a state with energy A e occupied at the temperature T. In order to have electron injection in, in the system, it is necessary that the chemical potential in the lead is equal to the addition energy of, uh, of the system. The addition energy is uh, the energy required to add the electrons uh, one by one into the system. So to increase by one the number of electrons in the array. 
And uh, in correspondence of uh, such uh, energists, there are the contribution to the conductance that give rise to the lower and the upper upper band contribution. In particular, we can recognize some intense peak in the conductors uh, obtained by this uh, theoretical model. And this uh, intense contribution correspond to states that are delocalized through the array. Uh, while uh, at half filling and complete filling of the array, the states are more uh, localized and so they give an negligible contribution to the calculated conductance. Uh, an interesting property of uh, the system we are considering is that uh, the single electron conductance is uh, quite intense. And this is a difference uh, with respect to the uh, case of phosphorus and silicon, because in that case, the shape of the conductance is symmetric around the half filling and the contribution of a single electron is very small. The reason of uh, such a difference can be found in the different chemical nature of the two defects. Indeed, the germanium vacancy is a neutral complex. So uh, all the um, on-site energies of all the sites in the channel are aligned and one uh, electron which is injected into the system can easily jump from one side to the other, giving rise to a current which is different from zero. Differently, phosphorus is a, a charged system. So uh, this gives rise due to the Coulomb interaction between uh, each site and the nearby site to a modulation of the on-site binding energies through the array. And the single electron which is injected into the system results localized in the middle of the array so that the conductance is uh, suppressed. On the other hand, at half filling, the germanium vacancy array suffers for uh, the very large correlation, while this correlation is smaller in phosphorus and the conductance is, uh, amplif is amplified. Okay, this is a, a quite nice picture, but uh, it is realized for uh, an ideal system. In a real uh, sample, uh, the system is not uh, so uh, ideal. And so we have adapted our model to the experimental setup. In particular, we have included the positional disorder through a variable hopping between the sites. We have increased the distance between the sites up to 10 nanometer and also the number of sites up to 10. Moreover, we have added an energy dependent coupling to the electrodes to account for the shorter decay of deep energy levels with respect to high energy ones. So with this recipe, we hope to be able to explain the feature that uh, we can observe in the experimental data. So we can give now a look to the experimental trans characteristics, which is uh, reported here as a function of the gate potential that control the filling of uh, the array and also as a function of, of the temperature. The first thing that we can notice is that uh, the trans characteristic is characterized by a very broad band just below the conduction band of silicon. And uh, on the basis of our theoretical characterization, we can identify this broadband with the upper upper band. Indeed, we know that uh, the range of applied gate potentials correspond more or less to 200 uh, milli electron volt. And uh, ab initio calculation reveals uh, that uh, the lower upper band is deeper in energy. So it is not possible to have access to the lower band through the quantum transport measurement. This achievement was quite important because at the beginning it was completely not clear what was the origin of such a band. And so in this sense, the, uh, the ab initio calculation gave an important support to identify the origin of, uh, of such a feature. Moreover, the uh, trans characteristic is characterized by different regimes 
that uh, display a different temperature activation of the current depending on the filling of uh, the array. In order to explain this uh, thermal behavior, this behavior uh, as a function of the temperature, we have performed the calculation for the conductance with the recipe that uh, I suggested before. And uh, we found this result for uh, an eight defect uh, array as a function of the temperature. First of all, we can note that there is a drop in the conductivity due to the disorder. And in particular, the low energy states are suppressed while uh, there is a, a residual contribution of the more localized states at high temperature that became the dominant contribution. But uh, if uh, the temperature is uh, increased, the contribution of low filling state start to increase, giving rise to an important uh, contribution at high temperatures. And this increase with the temperature is also observed at the at higher energy for uh, some uh, position, uh, some uh, values of uh, the chemical potential. From uh, this behavior in temperature, it is possible uh, to extract the activation energies by fitting the conductance as a function of the temperature using an Arrhenius law. And uh, from the experimental point of view, it is possible to identify different regimes, as I said before. In particular, at the low filling and high temperature, the activation energy is very high. It is of the order of 20 milli electron volt. And uh, this is a, a surprising high value if compared with uh, those found for phosphorus that was uh, about 7 milli electron volt. On the other hand, at middle high feeling, the activation energy is smaller and it is of the order of one milli electron volt, so comparable to the results found for phosphorus. An interesting point is that this behavior was found for all the samples analyzed and also for transistor with the channel of a different lengths. From the theory side, this uh, result is uh, reproduced by the model. Indeed, uh, we consider here a situation in which the array of eight electron is more than half a field. So a low filling of the upper band, the upper upper band, we have nine, 10 electrons. And the activation energies extracted from the model are of the same order of magnitude of uh, the, those obtained in the experiments. And also there is a very good agreement between theory and the experiment at higher feeling when, where we found an activation energy of the order of one milli electron volt. This uh, result is uh, quite robust because uh, it was um, confirmed by a statistical analysis performed on different realization of this order. And so we can conclude that it is a property of, uh, of this kind of defects. We can analyze one moment what is happening in the system. And in particular, we can say that the conductivity of uh, this array is, um, is uh, contributed as uh, two kinds of contribution. One is for the low feeling condition in which we have the addition of one electron to the system, which is already composed by charged sites. So we have one electron in the array that should move into a system in which every site, each site is already occupied by one electron. So there is um, a sort of uh, localization which is induced not only by the disorder, but also by the Coulomb repulsion between this additional electron and the other sites that are already occupied by one electron. So this gives rise to a very small conductivity. But uh, if we increase the temperature, we can have access to states at high energy that overcome the Coulomb repulsion of the other sites. And the results are fairly delocalized through the array. 
allowing for uh, not uh, negligible uh, conductivity. So the current can start to grow with temperature. Differently, at medium filling of the upper upper band, there is a sort of balancing between the on-site Coulomb repulsion that tends to align all the levers inside the system and the disorder-induced localization. So the conductivity is different from zero also at a small temperature, but it does not depend too much on the temperature and uh, it does not increase too much when the temperature is uh, raised. So uh, in conclusion, we can say that uh, germanium vacancy shows some differences with respect to conventional dopants. And the most interesting one seems to be the presence of a channel that can be activated at high temperature, becoming the most intense contribution at, uh, at room temperature. In conclusion, we have demonstrated that by implanting germanium ions in silicon, it is possible to functionalize the vacancy, allowing their position control. From the experimental point of view, uh, we were able to define an implantation protocol and also an experimental setup for the defect activation. And for the first time, the quantum transport is such kind of uh, array formed by germanium vacancy defects in silicon was uh, characterized. From the theoretical point of view, we have uh, set up a model that combined the advantages of a Binish approach and tie banding uh, model. And uh, this kind of approach is able to catch all the experimental features. So uh, we were able uh, to explain the observed uh, measurements, the observed features in the measurements, but also to underline the difference between uh, the quantum transport in germanium vacancy complex in comparison with the uh, silicon uh, doped with the phosphorus. At the end, we can say that uh, the system we have studied uh, allow us uh, to um, simulate the Hubbard physics. So it can be used as quantum simulator of uh, Hubbard physics uh, in such kind of uh, systems. On the other hand, for the, uh, uh, to, in order to exploit uh, such a system in uh, a realistic device that could, could be used to store quantum informa information, further characterization is necessary because at the moment we, we do not know how to manipulate and store the quantum information inside such kind of defects. So in particular, uh, our purpose for the future will be, for example, to characterize the optical properties of the defects in order to understand if uh, it is possible to manipulate the quantum information uh, of, uh, for example, electrons and uh, nuclear uh, spin electron, electrons uh, spin through optical, uh, optical means. So we have uh, still uh, work to do in, uh, about this, uh, this system. In conclusion, I would like uh, to thank uh, all uh, the people collaborating with me from uh, the theoretical uh, side. So the group uh, of uh, Giovanni Unida in Milan and uh, also Nguyen Lee of uh, the Surrey University and also the experimental partners, uh, Prof. Tani and Shinada and Enrico Prati in Milan. And uh, obviously also the um, the development teams of the two codes uh, I've used and the grant given by NFFA and Sineca. And uh, obviously also thank you for your attention. Thank you, uh, Simona, for this uh, very, very nice presentation. So apologies, I, I lost my connection just at the beginning, but I no think uh, Matteo, Matteo has taken care of things, so he recorded the, your seminar. Uh, so for the questions, uh, I propose that either you raise your hand if you have a question for uh, Simona, or, or you just unmute yourself if you don't know how to raise your hand. Are there any, any questions? Uh, Matteo, yeah, go ahead. 
So I was wondering about your, your temperature dependent uh, conductivity. Do you also compare the absolute values of the conductivity? Is there some kind of uh, fudge factor in getting uh, the same order of magnitude in G with respect to the experiments? Because the, the order of magnitude was also relatively close, right? Yes. For, exactly. the, for, for the low feeling bit. Yes, uh, indeed, this was uh, really um, an important point because uh, the, clearly it is not easy to estimate the intensity of uh, the current and the factor, the conversion factor between theory and the experiments. In our case, uh, at the end, we have controlled this uh, uh, property through the coupling with the, the electrodes. So we have used the coupling to the electrodes to tune the, uh, the intensity of uh, the conductivity. In particular, uh, when we choose, uh, sorry, I would like to go back. Okay. Okay, so uh, when we use uh, this coupling to the electrodes, we set uh, this uh, parameter new as a function which is energy dependent and in particular it is the transmission of the wave function from the electrodes to the array and it is weighted by uh, parameters that determines the coupling. By acting on this parameter we have set the conductance so that the uh, absolute values are more or less the same as in the experiments but uh, on uh, a physical basis. So it was um, related to the, the shape, the, the, uh, the height of the barrier at the electrodes. In particular, we choose a rectangular barrier at the electrodes that we set with uh, a width, which is uh, the width, uh, the, the distance between uh, silicon atoms and the height, which is the height uh, of uh, the, the, the the energy position of uh, the states uh, within the, the array. And uh, the, so maybe I have also another slide here. Sorry. Ah. Okay, this one. Uh, so this was the function theta that we used uh, for the coupling with electrons. And then we set uh, this parameter here that define the coupling as uh, one to the minus fourth milli electron volt. And in such a way, we are able to reproduce the experimental order of magnitude of uh, the conductivity. Uh, so it is in the end a bit parameterized, but uh, it is a quite uh, reasonable value for this coupling. And uh, okay, at the end, the conductivity was not so high. In particular, it was a bit uh, smaller than uh, for, uh, for that in the experiments, but uh, it has been uh, set, uh, let's say, by hand uh, on, a physical, uh, on a physical meaning. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, may, I just have a naive question on the so these uh, germanium vacancies. Each germanium vacancy should could be a, a potential qubit. Is that it? And how do I see what is that? It's that is that it is a qubit. No. Okay. Yes. Uh, the idea is that uh, uh, probably. Or maybe we have Giovanni and. Um... <clears throat> Yeah, ask them questions. Waiting for, for Simona coming back. So I, uh, I think I, the, the question was about how. Uh, why the germanium vacancy? How do I don't know anything? Not so much about qubit. So how do I see that it's a qubit? What are the two states that are entangled? Yeah, but it's like uh, I mean there are, there are many um, states that are candidates to be qubit as a qubits like. The classical is the the and um, and uh, and uh, uh, vacancy in diamond and so there are um, complexes that uh, have states uh, um, within the gap and the idea is that uh, provided you can find a way to to couple um, these states uh, <clears throat> for example with uh, photons or a way to to um, to change the state, for example, the, the, the amount of uh, electrons uh, um, 
staying in a, in a single defect, then you could uh, um, somehow write and, and then read the state. So that, that's the, the general idea. Um, so the, mm, the main advantage of using uh, Germanium vac vacancy with respect to more um, known or, or traditional defects uh, is that, uh, um, well, it is in silicon, so um, is an um, ideal um, system to, to, to integrate those, uh, those properties. Then uh, um, the levels are um, quite deep in the gap, so um, you don't need to, to, to have the system at a very, very low temperature. When the, the defects are, are very shallow, then at, at room temperature, they are naturally, um, uh, naturally um, ionized. And, uh, and then the, the third advantage is that uh, since you can implant those germanium atoms, uh, the, the implantation give you a, a way to control the position of the defects in the channel. And then the mobility of those de defects is, uh, is quite small because the, the, the germanium atom um, is a big atom in, a, in, a, in, a, in the space. Uh, so it, it couples with the vacancy because it is in part uh, um, um, compensing the, the, the fact that the germanium doesn't fit well in the, in the silicon lattice because it would like to have a larger space. So once you, 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 you implant the germanium atoms, they naturally couple with the vacancies and they stay where the vacancy is. And then this complex is quite, uh, uh, remains where, where you put it. While the vacancy alone has a, a large mobility. So you cannot have um, a control on the, on the position of the, of the bare silicon vacancies. But the, with the germanium vacancy complex, then you have this possibility. I don't know if Simona. Uh, uh, I think she's yeah. back. Okay. Uh, I'm here. Sorry, I had a problem with the connection. I'm trying from the my phone, but now it seems uh, that uh, it is established. I'm really sorry. It can happen to everybody. Yeah. So I, I tried to answer, but I, I didn't know if I, if I made the, if I answered the, um, I mean, all, all what you, you would have uh, uh, said no. about this question. So maybe you have something to add. No, okay. I, I think that the main points are those uh, underlined by Giovanni. Uh, surely the, the positive uh, uh, properties uh, of the defects are uh, those uh, I have presented. But uh, at the end, we have no the uh, capability at the moment to say how the uh, quantum information can be manipulated in our defect. So we have to do some more analysis in order to understand uh, if the spin could be a uh, useful quantum uh, uh, property that, that, that can be manipulated. The positive point is that uh, at the moment, uh, there is uh, such uh, deep uh, levels in the gap that can host uh, electrons uh, without losing them at high temperature. Okay. Are there any other questions for, uh, for Simona? I would like to continue on this question, possible? Yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah. How important is uh, the coupling to all kinds of other bosons uh, for the quality of such a system? I mean, you, we have a lot of fluctuations, like phonons or other fluctuations that can be around and maybe destroy the properties of, of this system. So how important is this? Uh, surely, I think that uh, it will be important uh, to explore also this, uh, this property. Uh, from one side, I think that they can disturb the system and also uh, introduce uh, some effect that can uh, generate a, a, loss, a, lo a loss, loss of coherence. But on the other end, uh, the interaction with phonons could be also useful because if you think, for example, to the NV center in Diamond, uh, the uh, interaction, the, the transition between uh, uh, different uh, um, 
states in the system that are related to phonons can also help into the manipulation of the, the properties of the defects itself. So uh, it is definitely a point that should be analyzed, but uh, I have uh, no answer at the moment on how it could be, it could affect the, the properties of the system. Mm -hmm. You could add some bosons to your Hubbard model, right? Yes, yes, I think that uh, it would not be really difficult. So definitely one uh, of uh, this implementation could be possible in the future. And we could try to, to understand uh, how the interaction with bosons uh, can act uh, in this system, yeah. Okay, are there further, are there other questions? The question by Rex, I think, yes. Yes, if, if, if I may. Um, sure, yeah. if, if these are to be qubits and, and not just bits, then one must have the ability to, to place the qubit, qubits into a specified uh, entangled state. Yeah. How would that be done? And uh, is it clear what material properties are necessary for, uh, th for that to be achieved? Uh, yes, okay, so uh, for what uh, I can uh, see from the literature, one important property is uh, also the capability of uh, the qubits uh, to have a long range interaction in terms of exchange uh, uh, interaction with uh, other similar qubits. For example, uh, the work performed by Simmons of these two, two qubits logic gate is based on this uh, properties. And uh, also, oh, yes, uh, the other, I don't know at the moment what are the other possible physical properties that can uh, affect uh, this, uh, this entanglement uh, in the system. So it is a bit uh, out of uh, the research we have performed up to now that was a, a preliminary characterization. So definitely it should be understood better. But the Hubbard model allows you to, to simulate these uh, correlated states in principle. There's is a it, story. Is it, is it, is it possible in, inside your, your Hubbard model to include these superpositions of states explicitly? Uh... You've already got a chain with several, right? Can you identify among the states that you have which are correlated the right way compared to the entanglement that they want? Yes, I think that it should be possible and uh, it is an interesting point. Uh, so there are a, a series of things that uh, could be done on the basis of a present model in order, uh, as I said, to address the point of uh, the uh, uh, usage of such uh, defects uh, in quantum, uh, quantum uh, technology devices. So we can start, uh, we can try to add this contribution also in, into the tie banding Hubbard Hamiltonian to see what is uh, the entanglement between uh, the sites. Yeah, surely. Are there other questions? Uh, Yes, uh, C. Dubois. Hi. I, don't know. <laughs> um, I ah. was wondering how, how well can you um, control the, the, the disorder in, in yeah. the real materials? I, I guess for the entanglement, this also plays a role then. Yes, sure, sure. This is indeed uh, one point. And uh, in particular, this silicon ion, the uh, single ion implantation technique is quite precise, but at the end, the, uh, the, the percentage of uh, uncertainty on the implantation uh, position is of the order of uh, nano, one nanometer. So it, does, it is not so small. Mm -hmm. It is quite good in comparison with other techniques. But uh, more or less, there is an uncertainty of 10% on the distances that are usually adopted in such kind of, uh, of devices. So this is certainly one point, but uh, to uh, 
return uh, on uh, the exchange uh, coupling between the sites, we have seen that the peculiarity of this system is that uh, differently from phosphorus in which uh, the calculation gives an oscillating coupling between the defects. So one can imagine that depending on the position of the defects, uh, uh, the distance between them, uh, the coupling and so the, the exchange interaction can be uh, really affected by positional disorder. In our case, there is no such uh, oscillation or the, os the oscillation are less marked. So we can expect that uh, also the system is more robust against, uh, against uh, disorder for what concerns the specific aspects. For other aspects, this is not true because uh, as we, we have seen, for example, transport is really affected by the disorder problem more than in phosphorus. But uh, clearly, it depends on what we are looking at. Thank you. Uh, there, there was a question that somebody raised his hand. Uh, C. Dubois, is he still there? Is he still there? Uh, yes, yes, I, I'm still there. Okay. Th thank you for the for the very nice talk. It's it's. I have probably it's a very uh, naive question or, or uh, qu quite practical. Uh, at the very beginning, you say that the charge transition levels somehow are quite. Uh, uh, strongly influenced by the relaxation of the lattice. Uh, yes, yes, and, I'm and sure. I, I wonder how, how, so it's, it's forms like kind of, uh, I may be completely wrong, but kind of, of polarons or something like that, or, or, or Yes, uh, it, it could be. At the end, there is a, a, an electronic cloud around the defect that uh, can be uh, can give rise to different electronic levels uh, depending on the uh, position of the atoms. So uh, definitely, yes, it could be an electronic effect uh, that could be also associated to the presence of polarons. And uh, at the end, uh, the difference is not so, so small because uh, the adiabatic levels uh, seems to be quite uh, far from uh, the experimental characterization of a germanium vacancy complex. So uh, definitely there is uh, also an effect of uh, this charge on the ionic position that it is important and uh, it should be taken into account. And, and, and then, yes, yes, the, 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 so, yes, following that, your, your answer then, how, how is that physics encapsulated taken into account in the tight binding model? Is it... Uh... Sorry, do you mean the, the, the position of the charge transition levels? Yes, yes. Yeah, and, okay. And uh... the fact, so because uh, there is only one uh, hopping parameter, no, no in, in your... Uh... No, okay, uh, then the, the Hamiltonian, includes uh, this information about the charge transition level in the Hubbard term because uh, they are uh, strictly related to the energy required to add one electron more to the system. So the Hubbard term is uh, definitely related to the distance between the charge transition levels and it was set equal to 150 milli electron volt, which is the distance between these two levels. And uh, also the on-site energies are set equal to the deepest state in the system. While uh, for, the, for what concerns the other parameters, uh, they are obtained using the wave function corresponding to the addition of uh, one electron to the system. So, this is the way in which uh, this result uh, is included uh, in the in the tie banding uh, Hamiltonian. Yes, surely there is a uh, the the hopping is uh, only a quantity which depends on the distance between uh, the defects and uh, on their uh, over on the overlap of their wave function. I and don't know if the functions are computed with the relaxed uh, atomic positions. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. yes, the wave function is the ab initio one obtained with uh, the thermo in the thermodynamic condition. So, uh, 
is uh, derived from uh, the the ab initial the ab initial framework and it takes into account of this uh, displacement of the atoms oh, okay thank you I, I i find it amazing that it works so well <laughs> that, 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 yes uh, it was uh, a bit uh, surprising also for me because at the end uh, the model uh, is uh, quite simple and uh, at the beginning uh, it uh, seemed fortuitous the agreement the agreement uh, was uh, really impressive but at the end i think that uh, by setting the parameters in this way we have prepared our system in a, a very good uh, fashion so we can uh, probably have access to some properties and uh, not to some other but in this case the properties of interest are uh, completely reproduced and also the the quite surprising point is that uh, if uh, we consider a, a different realization of this order the results that uh, we obtain for the thermal activation are uh, always reproduced so i think that it is not fortuitous mm. thank you Thank you. Um, so it's three o'clock. So maybe this is a, is a good time to to stop here, unless there's a very urgent question. Um, so let's thank again. Uh, uh, now uh, let's thank again uh, Simona. Now I remember how. Okay. For this nice talk, very interesting, and uh, also you, uh, all of you, for the for the interesting discussion. Uh, so there will be the next seminar in one month. I think it's the 30th of April. So we try to keep it this, the last Friday of the month. So I hope to see you there. And so the video of this email will be, uh, sorry, the video of this uh, presentation will be, will be posted on, uh, on the ETSF YouTube, YouTube channel. And uh, the slides will be, uh, will be available on the website. Okay, thank you everybody. Thank you very much. Thanks, Arjen. Thanks, Simona. It was very nice to very see much. all of you. Nice Thanks. to see you. Huh? You can make See you soon. Not See about you. Bye bye. 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 bye.